Genesis chapter 8. But God remembered Noah and all the beasts and all the cattle that were with him in the ark, and God caused a wind to pass over the earth, and the water subsided. Also the fountains of the deep and the floodgates of the sky were closed, and the rain from the sky was restrained. And the water receded steadily from the earth, and at the end of one hundred and fifty days the water decreased. In the seventh month, on the seventeenth day of the month, the ark rested upon the mountains of Ararat. The water decreased steadily until the tenth month. In the tenth month, on the first day of the month, the tops of the mountains became visible. Then it came about, at the end of forty days, that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made, and he sent out a raven, and it flew here and there until the water was dried up from the earth. Then he sent out a dove from him, to see if the water was abated from the face of the land. But the dove found no resting place for the sole of her foot, so she returned to him into the ark, for the water was on the surface of all the earth. Then he put out his hand and took her, and brought her into the ark to himself. So he waited yet another seven days, and again he sent out the dove from the ark. The dove came to him toward evening, and behold, in her beak was a freshly picked olive leaf. So Noah knew that the water was abated from the earth. Then he waited yet another seven days, and sent out the dove, but she did not return to him again. Now it came about in the six hundred and first year, in the first month, on the first of the month, the water was dried up from the earth. Then Noah removed the covering of the ark, and looked, and behold, the surface of the ground was dried up. In the second month, on the twenty-seventh day of the month, the earth was dry. Then God spoke to Noah, saying, Go out of the ark, you and your wife, and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing of all flesh that is with you, birds and animals, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, that they may breed abundantly on the earth, and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah went out, and his sons and his wife, and his sons' wives with him, every beast, every creeping thing, and every bird, everything that moves on the earth, went out by their families from the ark. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord, and took of every clean animal, and of every clean bird, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. The Lord smelled the soothing aroma, and the Lord said to himself, I will never again curse the ground on account of man, for the intent of man's heart is evil from his youth, and I will never again destroy every living thing as I have done. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. Chapter 9 And God blessed Noah and his sons, and said to them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the earth. The fear of you and the terror of you will be on every beast of the earth, and on every bird of the sky, with everything that creeps on the ground, and all the fish of the sea, into your hand they are given. Every moving thing that is alive shall be food for you. I give all to you, as I gave the green plant. Only you shall not eat flesh with its life, that is, its blood. Surely I will require your life blood. From every beast I will require it. And from every man, from every man's brother, I will require the life of man." Whoever sheds man's blood, by man his blood shall be shed, for in the image of God he made man. As for you, be fruitful and multiply, populate the earth abundantly, and multiply in it. Then God spoke to Noah and to his sons with him, saying, Now, behold, I myself do establish my covenant with you, and with your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the cattle, and every beast of the earth with you, of all that comes out of the ark, even every beast of the earth. I establish my covenant with you, and all flesh shall never again be cut off by the water of the flood, neither shall there again be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant which I am making between me and you, and every living creature that is with you, for all successive generations. 
I set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a sign of a covenant between me and the earth. It shall come about, when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the bow will be seen in the cloud, and I will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and never again shall the water become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the cloud, then I will look upon it to remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. And God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Now the sons of Noah who came out of the ark were Shem and Ham and Japheth. And Ham was the father of Canaan. These three were the sons of Noah, and from these the whole earth was populated. Then Noah began farming and planted a vineyard. He drank of the wine and became drunk, and uncovered himself inside his tent. Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. But Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders, and walked backward and covered the nakedness of their father, and their faces were turned away so that they did not see their father's nakedness. When Noah awoke from his wine, he knew what his youngest son had done to him, so he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants he shall be to his brothers. He also said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Shem, and let Canaan be his servant. May God enlarge Japheth, and let him dwell in the tents of Shem, and let Canaan be his servant. Noah lived three hundred and fifty years after the flood, so all the days of Noah were nine hundred and fifty years, and he died. Chapter 10 Now these are the records of the generations of Shem, Ham, and Japheth, the sons of Noah, and sons were born to them after the flood. The sons of Japheth were Gomer, and Magog, and Medai, and Javan, and Tubal, and Meshach, and Tiras. The sons of Gomer were Ashkenaz, and Riphath, and Togarma. The sons of Javan were Elisha, and Tarshish, Kitim, and Dodanim. From these the coastlands of the nations were separated into their lands, every one according to his language, according to their families, into their nations. The sons of Ham were Cush, and Misraim, and Put, and Canaan. The sons of Cush were Seba, and Havilah, and Sabta, and Reama and Sabtika. The sons of Reama were Sheba, and Dedan. Now Cush became the father of Nimrod. He became a mighty one on the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord, therefore it is said, Like Nimrod, a mighty hunter before the Lord. The beginning of his kingdom was Babel and Erech and Achad and Kalne in the land of Shinar. From that land he went forth into Assyria and built Nineveh and Rehoboth, Ir and Kala, and Resen between Nineveh and Kala, that is, the great city. Nisraim became the father of Ludim and Anamim and Lehabim and Naphtuhim and Pathrusim and Kasluhim, from which came the Philistines, and Kaphtarim. Canaan became the father of Sidon, his firstborn, and Heth, and the Jebusite, and the Amorite, and the Girgashite, and the Hivite, and the Archite, and the Sinite, and the Arvadite, and the Zemarite, and the Hamathite. And afterward the families of the Canaanite were spread abroad. The territory of the Canaanite extended from Sidon as you go toward Gerar, as far as Geza, as you go toward Sodom and Gomorrah, and Adma and Zeboim, as far as Lasha. These are the sons of Ham, according to their families, according to their languages, by their lands, by their nations. Also Shem, the father of all the children of Eber, and the older brother of Japheth, children were born. The sons of Shem were Elam, and Ashur, and Arpachshad, and Lud, and Aram. The sons of Aram were Uz, and Hul, and Gether, and Mash. Arpachsad became the father of Shelah, and Shelah became the father of Eber. Two sons were born to Eber. The name of the one was Peleg, for in his days the earth was divided, and his brother's name was Joktan. Joktan became the father of Almadad, and Shelef, and Hazar Mapheth, and Jira, and Hadoram, and Uzal, and Dikla, and Obal, and Abimael, and Sheba, and Ophir, and Havilah, and Jobab. 
All these were the sons of Joktan. Now their settlement extended from Misha as you go toward Sephar, the hill country of the east. These are the sons of Shem according to their families, according to their languages, by their lands, according to their nations. These are the families of the sons of Noah, according to their genealogies, by their nations. And out of these the nations were separated on the earth after the flood.